and uh, I didn't take it very seriously. And I, I remember taking her to a Henry Wanyoke marathon and I saying, okay, we, we do this and that's a weekend and it's over. And then she just kept saying, mama, do you know that uh, Wangare Mathai was beaten by the police at uh, Uhuru Park? Do you know that she planted all the trees in Karua Forest and I want to do it like her? And I said, okay, so go to the garden, plant a tree and she did. And we took a picture and then she would, she would just, she was very, very persistent. She said, I really want to plant trees like Wangare Mathai. And I listened to that voice at some point I realized that she, this is something that she really wanted That's to do. Right. And so we started going into Karura Forest. Mm -hmm. And so we did 10 and 10 became 20, 20 became 30. And then she started planting with her friends. And then she started planting with them. Um, the other, um, you know, in other schools, yes. and it has become and, and something. And how was that moment, you know, mm. when you know her friends joined in, and other parents sort of joined, and how was yeah. that sort of collaboration? It was. I think it was the realization that uh, slowly, her talking about the value of it, and how. As, as she grew older, understanding mm -hmm. that really the impact beyond the passion or the, the what uh, Wangari Mathai did for her in terms of just getting into her understanding of the value of uh, tree planting, um, it was it was getting the collaboration because with the environment, whether it's plastic pollution, whether it's uh, cleaning the seas, it's impossible for one person, it's mm. impossible for one organization to do. There has to be a lot of collaboration because That's the right. work is so much. There's That's a lot right. of work to be done. Yes, yeah. and she has her company, she mentioned. Yeah. What is this company, a little more detail about your company, Elaine? So my company is like... Um, what yes. is it called? It's called? It's called um, Children with Nature. Children with Nature, okay. So we basically educate schools to plant as many trees as they can and clean the oceans. Mm -hmm. And how many schools have you worked with so far with your company, Eliane? I think I've worked with 10 or more. Okay, okay. Yeah. How many more schools do you really want to work with and how many more trees do you want to plant? Um, I want to plant as many trees as I can. You don't have a number. Yeah. That's really yeah. sweet. We, we, we actually do have a number. Okay. Um, so we, we're setting out, uh, we realize that there's a challenge in the country, mm -hmm. that there's not enough tree seedlings. So we're setting up uh, over 56 tree nurseries in 56 schools in the Nairobi County. And then we're going to go to the Nara County and then Akuru County. And the reason for that is because in, within schools, the kids can, can take care of uh, the trees and then they can inculcate mm -hmm. within their learning the value of of uh, tree planting, the value of the environment, you know, climate change, deforestation. Yes. So the first project is going to be in December, will be uh, nurseries across 56 schools. Oh, that's amazing. That's yes. really profound. Yeah. Um, and, and when you interact with some of these schools and, you know, their heads, um, Dorothy, how is that sort of, um, um, is it something that they welcome? Is it something that you talk about? And, and, and do you really ask them, is there provision for our systems to actually accommodate more on content? Conserving our nature yeah. more than really stuff that sometimes, you know, when you grow up, I don't yeah. know where trigonometry went. It's not helping me now. <laughs> you know? I know. The right. truth is the Kenyan curriculum, which we all went through, yes. actually doesn't quite accommodate a lot of things being done differently because mm -hmm. it's very academic. And in fact, some people have said that child is not supposed to be out planting trees, not supposed to be out doing interviews. But what they don't realize is that the Ivy League schools are no longer looking for people who have A's and B's. They're looking for social impact. And every single one of us has a duty to have the social impact. So I'll give you an example. In a school like Kaungwara Primary School, uh, which is where I went, they, they're doing an amazing job. They planted a lot of trees and they're, they're very receptive. There's a teacher called Peter Rigi, and he's so amazing, very supportive of the initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, another school with uh, kids with disabilities called Lunga Lunga Primary, amazing place. They're, they're very receptive. And then Tarehe. But some schools are like, well, this is not really part, it's taking off the time for the curriculum, mm -hmm. and it, it takes time. So to build the agenda on climate change, blue economy, yes, the deforestation, blue economy is something. It's, it's really, yeah. it, it will take time for some, but some are pretty, pretty receptive. Right. Yes, yes. Elaine, do you want to say something? <laughs> no? Yeah. All right, now tell me what, um, can, tell me something about this tree now. Come on, you've got to talk to me. So this tree is basically a guava tree. Oh, wow. 
So like we normally bring it to places to give me a shame and like to show the work I've done. Mm -hmm. And then um, once we're done with all the meetings, I'm gonna plant it and we're gonna have some crop. That's, That's nice. Are you gonna share some with me? Yeah. Yes, please do. <laughs> and this is really nice. So it's just not planting trees, but no. planting trees that are actually giving out fruits or you know food in that sense yes. but we don't really have those particular seedlings in Kenya because when you look at seedlings what kind of trees are we planting this is a totally different subject what's your knowledge on that Dorothy and, and, and your experience yeah so basically Africa for many years had indigenous trees yes and what happened is that the uh, colonialists introduced uh, the other type of trees which are not necessarily very good for the for our continent yes and what has happened is that there's a realization there's a need to mm. actually focus on food security yes. which really helps the country because imagine this if people were starving but you had a hundred fruit trees whether it's avocado or guava you have some nutrition and it's eat. actually pretty it pretty nutritious the day, so right? the, the idea of having more fruit trees across the country is critical and you know we have beautiful road reserves you know on the sides of the roads right. if your kids are, are walking to school like in Narok where you know they're starving if there's a fruit tree on the side they will eat and of course the animals you know the ecosystem is all about the animals yeah. and the wildlife so the the trees are really critical I hope the vision 2030 is inculcating this sort of you know images that are coming to my mind you know that yeah. we have trees along our roads that will provide food as you as you mentioned and I think that's a beautiful picture painted yeah. um, in my mind Dorothy yeah. um, but a little about now her achievements mm -hmm. what her achievements so far because I can see um, that's a that's a, a an accolade there perhaps you can you can tell us about it um, Elian do you want to talk about the award um. yeah tell us <laughs> tell us about your award come on hold it and tell me about it darling. So this award is basically mine it's my wow. first award I've ever gotten so, um, Can you read that for me? What it says, say? in recognition of Kenya's youngest climate change ambassador, who is an influence to the young to actively protect the environment, right. Echo Warrior Elian Jigo Klesingetai. That is such a big title that you hold. You're known as an Echo Warrior. You're known as the youngest climate change ambassador. How do you feel about that, Elaine? I feel very awesome of myself. Feel awesome about it? Yeah. How does mummy feel about it? I'm not well, exactly <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, well actually, friends, uh, so I have to say, this. let me say yes. this. So yesterday, uh, we met Richard Quest. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, I'm absolutely excited because she's really gotten to a point where she's now being invited to international forums regarding climate change deforestation. Yes. And so when we met Richard Quest, after we met him, she said, Mama, please don't brag about it. Don't brag, please. No, because Mama has well, to no, brag about well, it. I never used to brag. <laughs> so we, we actually did. Interesting um, moment. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we showed a picture um, about you and Richard Quest. But something that's really nice is that you're very humble. How are her friends <laughs> taking it? You know, she's like the celeb and the star Dorothy of school. She is, and, and the, after she got this award and it was presented in the school assembly, she said, Mama, everybody's asking me about it, and I'm like, I don't, I don't want to hear too much. It's, it's okay, I got an award, it's, it's enough. We have to plant the tree. So she's very, very humble. Nice. For nice. me, it's a little bit hard, yeah. but I also have to say we're very lucky to have uh, Huru Kenyatta as our leader yes. because he's really driving the Big Four agenda, and mm -hmm. one of the Big Four agendas is a food security, and um, it's, it's critical because it's actually driving... And of course, Kiriako Tobiko, yeah. who is driving the tree planting, ensuring the trees are not being cut, because mm -hmm. we really need to protect. Kenya used to have a huge forest cover, which has really gone down over mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then of course the the plastic bag ban yes. that Judy Wakungu did has has brought a lot of awards and recognition for Kenya, and we must continue to encourage yeah. that and really uh, implement. So she's basically walking in very big uh, footsteps, as I mentioned earlier. Well, yeah. thank you so much, yeah. Dorothy and Alian. It's been really nice to have you, and I'm very proud to have you on my platform today. I think you've been the most 
youngest <laughs> of my interviews ever and it's been a real pleasure and honor. So there we have it. These are some of uh, little Eliane's awards, her accolades, her achievements at the age of eight. And uh, yes, there's a big future ahead of her. She's going to be invited on the international platforms to speak on climate change. Every one of us has a responsibility over here. Eliane is one. She's doing her little bit at her tender age. Don't you think we should do much more? It's something to think about and another discussion for another time. Well, thank you once again. Let's take another short commercial break as I'll be back with the business news.